Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. And so today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to start a series where I talk about books that have different tropes in them. A trope is something that is done in many books. And it's something that, you know, people can pick out. It can be part of the description. In certain tropes people gravitate towards and other tropes people really hate. And I thought it would be interesting to do a series just talking about or just talking about different tropes and then books that I have read recently that have had those tropes in and how I think they did with the tropes. With that current trope. And today I have chosen to do love triangles. This one seems to be a hot button kind of issue. Either people really hate love triangles or they like them. I seem to be one of the few where I'm more like, I'm in the middle. It can be done well or not. It just depends. I guess I should preface before I go into the books, talking about, or mentioning that there might, there might be some spoilers. I'll try not to say like in a book who ends up with who, but there could be some spoilers in, in what I say. So, some books that I have read recently that have love triangles in them. I am currently working on The Fires of Heaven by Robert Jordan, and this has a type of love triangle in it. Rand has several love interests options. Um, currently, his love options are Elaine, Avienda and men. When in the first book, Egwin was an option, and then that took a sharp turn away, and now they're strictly just we grew up together. I am not a fan of this type of how this love triangle, quadrangle, whatever quadrangle, quad, is going, because the women it seems more like they're fated to love him and not so much they love him because of who he is or of a characteristic of him. They, yeah, it's just more like it's fated to be that way. And I don't like, I don't like that when it's just like, oh, this person doesn't have the choice. They're going to end up to love someone. I like to have a development of feelings starting with friendship and working the way into a relationship. And I don't feel like we got that here. The second book I'd like to talk about is The Disasters. Now this follows a character named Nex or Nasir Hall, who has not gotten into the academy he applied for. He ended up failing. And so he's waiting to be sent back to earth when the station where the academy is located, is attacked. And him and the other people who had been rejected end up escaping onto a shuttle and trying to figure out what the hell is happening. So I really like how MK England did this love triangle. Nax had two options to love, and Nax's two love options, one was male, one was female. And as they're going about there was no fighting in between the two people who were also interested in him. And he even had a conversation with another person on his team where now is not the time to be angsty and trying to fall in love. We, we need to get this figured out or we're going to die. And so I like how it was very on the nose. So even though there was flirting and you could see some tension and interest between the characters, that was not the main point of the plot. And that is always refreshing to see when you have a book that has a love triangle in it. The many times in why I see the love triangle take over the plot to become more important. And in this case, that did not happen. And so for me, this love triangle was well done. Then my third book I am sharing with you today is Hex Hall by Rachel Hawkins. And in this, the main character, who I don't remember her name because I am awful. I should look that up. I should really look up people's names. 
for characters before I start talking about them. Sophie. So in this one, in this book, Sophie is one point of the triangle. There's the guy she likes and then the other girl who likes the same guy. And it was okay. It, it was pretty typical for a YA love triangle. Um, or one of the types of YA love triangles where you really like the guy, but you're not like other girls. And so he ends up falling for you. But while he's falling for you, he's dating this other girl who's mean and bitchy. I mean, I, I could have done without it, really. I think this book actually probably would have been stronger with either, yes, they end up liking each other, or no, they don't. And not hat throw in the whole love triangle. So book number four that I'd like to talk about is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. And in this, the love triangle is very slight. It's not, and that was something that I really liked about this book with all the crap that is happening. There was not time for any romance. And there, so there's two actual kind of love triangles going on that you would see. Um, Helene and Elise. There's the one where Elias is like the focal point. He is kind of interested in his best friend, Elaine. Helene. Helen? Helene. I'm going to go with Helene. Elias is interested in his best friend, Helene, and she's very interested in him, but he also is kind of interested in Leia, but realizes there is a divide in their social statuses, so that's very dangerous. And also, Leia is his mother's slave. Yeah. Or, uh, as far as he knows, anyway. And then Leia is the other focal point, because there's a the little bit of attraction with Elias. She's still pretty focused, but she also likes one of the other people in the rebellion. And I forget his name. I want to say Max, but I don't think that's right. I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, so you have those two love triangles in the line between them. So you know, I, I'm pretty sure in further books, because I've, I've only read the first one so far, but I'm pretty sure in further books, Elias and uh, Leah, Leah will have more of a connection going forward. Again, I like that the love triangle was not the main, or the love triangles were not the main part of the plot of this story. Though, Helene, it seems like the connection between Elias and Helene, that was more hit upon. And I think that was also just from the fact that they were competing with each other, so you got to see more angst from Helene, because Elias really wasn't trying to get with her that much, like he was attracted, but it seemed really like Helene was like, you are the one I want to win. So for her, her love was also being really tested. And I, I think that the love triangles in this were done, okay, were done okay. Um, they weren't necessarily needed for the plot, but it lit a little bit I mean, you, it added a little bit of angst to a YA story that otherwise wasn't going to be very angsty. Okay, so book number five I have um, listed for love triangles is Love, Hate, and Other Filters. Now, this is a contemporary YA. And so this book follows Maya, who is an Indian American who wants to go to film school, really into making movies and film. And... A guy that she has had a crush on for a long time kind of sort of becomes available in its senior year. At the same time, her parents are trying to set her up with somebody, and they end up setting her up with a guy who is also Indian-American and is really nice and thinks it's cool that she doesn't, or like she's interested in film and isn't, you know, typically wanting to be a doctor. And there is chemistry with both young men. And then, so, as this is a way, the love story in these are more prominent. 
And I'm not going to tell you what happens because I think how it ends is quite satisfying and perfect for Maya and what she is needing out of her life. All right. So the next book I have on this list is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvel. And it's been a while since I've read it. So I remember the details of the love triangle, but I don't remember the characters' names. And since I did not prepare very well ahead of time, I did not look them up. Sorry about that. But anyway, there is a woman who who and her there who, who her and her partner are both in the military and they get moved to this project and they end up having a relationship during this um part of the partnership is no, not part. so their responsibility is driving a giant robot that is found like i said spoilers before at the beginning of all of this so their job is to drive this robot and so they work together really hard and along comes somebody else who clicks with the robot the same way that the female character clicked and now the male character is like pushed out and we have some drama that unfolds for all of this relationship. And I don't want to spoil it for you, so I'm stopping there. I thought it was an interesting twist. Um, I mean, this book is done in like through a series of interviews and like reports. And so you're never in the mind with the character. It's always looking at it after the fact. And so it's kind of... It makes it a little bit more interesting as you find out things that ever happen happening. And that's kind of how this love triangle was, is you found out about the relationship after it had ended, basically. And then the result of further cons or further actions. So yeah, sorry. So the next book I have on this list is Pride Spell by Matt Wallace. And then this is part of a novella series called The Sin Du Jour. And it goes over the seven deadly, you know, the seven deadly sins, but in a paranormal world concept. And this doesn't really have one main character, um, but it's about a catering company that caters to the supernatural and paranormal. And the love triangle in this story is Lena, and there's two men. One, a fellow chef, uh, who is an asshole dick otherwise, and one of them is, like, he's like a procurement agent. Um, and, you know, Lena has attraction for both of them. And as I haven't finished the series, I don't know what she ends up choosing. But something I like that Matt Wallace did is the relationship so Pride Spell is not the first book I think it's fourth it's either the third or fourth one and so the love triangle was not like immediately in the first book it was more as characters got to know each other oh hey we're kind of attracted and so as that attraction builds then things happen and that's how they ended up with the or she ended up the focal point of the love triangle. Next, I have The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley. And this is kind of a messed up love triangle. Again, it's been a while since I've read it, so I don't remember the characters' names, but you, you follow a character who does not have her memory, and she's on one... And so this is a story frequently called Lesbians in Space. All female characters. So the, she wakes up and has no memory of who she is, and everyone's saying, well, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go over to that planet there and get something for us. And one woman's like, oh, I am your true love. I am the person you love, but we can't be together uh, because I have been promised to this person over here. And she's trying to figure out what the hell is going on at the same time where she does, you know, 
she feels like things for this other character and then this other kid so this it's not the main character it's the woman who's saying hey we're we're actually old lovers and but i can't be with you she's kind of the focal point for the love triangle because the person who she's promised to is like a tyrant or scourge of the space and it's coming to get her because in her womb she has a planet make her her womb makes planets in this story every woman her womb produces something that is used for the planets that they are on it's a very interesting concept so if you like weird science fiction pick this one up and number nine on my list i have red queen by victoria Iverd, Everd, by Victoria Aviard. I think I got that right this time. <laughs> um, and so, again, I didn't look up the names, but the main girl who ends up finding out she has powers is kind of in a love triangle with two brothers, the two princes. She has been promised to marry the younger one, and, you know, there's some rapport building there, but she kind of really likes the older one. And at the end of book one, she hadn't exactly chosen anyone. If you have read Red Queen or the following or following books, go ahead and you can tell me who she ends up choosing. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can figure out which one it is. But I'm not really interested in reading the rest of the series. And then the last one on this, I went for something a little bit different. I put on manga. And this is Rosario plus Vampire. And this is where the main character is in a love triangle between a vampire and the man who is, or the boy who's grown up as her foster brother. Um, and her foster brother hates vampires. And ends up that they both are vampires. <laughs> or, yeah. It, it's another paranormal one. But, you know, manga is a... The manga, romance manga that for, gr for teenage girls tends to have lots of love triangles in it. So I felt like a love triangle would be a good one here. So please, down below... Any other books that have love triangles in them, and whether you liked or hated them, that would be an interesting discussion to see. I, and like I said, in some of these books, I like how the love triangle was portrayed, and others, I don't. This is not a trope that makes or breaks a book for me, though. So, thank you, and have a good day.